And Professor Clements with you as we again talk about electromagnetic waves. I'm using the OpenStax College Physics textbook and some of the slides are from there. Uh, this relates to material in Chapter 24 of the OpenStax College Physics. And just a little review, the electromagnetic spectrum uh, we've discussed before, the high energy, the gamma rays, later in the course we'll talk about the electron volt unit, so 10 million electron volts, 10 to the seventh. X-rays, a little bit less energy, a little bit uh, longer wavelength, ultraviolet light, and then the visible spectrum from uh, violet or blue on the short wavelength side up through green and yellows, red up towards about 700 nanometers on the long wavelength side of the visible spectrum, and the infrared microwaves and radio waves would be our span of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and getting to low energy on the radio wave side, the wavelengths are up at the top here. So our nanometers are uh, uh, 10 to the minus 9 nanometers if we take the 700 into account. So that'd be 7 times 10 to the minus 7 nanometers. Um, sorry, meters, 7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. But a range of wavelengths, a range of energies, short wavelength, high energy, high frequency in the gamma rays, long wavelengths, low frequency, low energy for light that is in the radio spectrum. The visible spectrum just spread out a little bit more in this reverse direction compared to the previous graph, but short wavelength around 400 nanometers your eye is sensitive to, and on the long wavelength uh, and a little over 700 nanometers would be the range of the visible spectrum. And then our technology allows us to detect in infrared and um, microwaves and radio, of course. And technology also allows us to detect ultraviolet light, x-rays, gamma rays. Um, little sort of sidelight on uh, production of uh, x-rays. Uh, last time we talked about the, how electromagnetic waves are created in the theory of classical physics when charge is accelerated one type of acceleration is slowing down so if high energy electrons are beamed at a metal uh, the electron will encounter atoms in here there'll be a force of repelling and the electron will slow down and can emit an x-ray in that circumstance if it has enough energy um, sort of a, now, a side light here, this breaking radiation, this radiation from decelerating, uh, in German we call Bremsstrahlung. Another way to get an X-ray produced and other types, other wavelengths of light produced is by a transition of electron energy levels, electron going from one energy level to another level in an atom. This is not a great picture of an atom because the electron doesn't have a definite orbit. But later in the course, we'll discuss the atoms and the electron energy levels. Of course, x-rays are useful in penetrating soft tissue, showing where bones are, um, devices that might be implanted in a body, um, to see inside without requiring surgery. Surgery is a risky proposition, chance of infection and so forth, so x-rays give that window to the inside of the body without uh, need for surgery. Okay, energy and power in the electromagnetic wave. Uh, we have two waves here. Um, this second wave has twice the amplitude of the first wave. So you can see a 2 times E, a 2 times B, uh, twice the amplitude. It turns out the energy in the wave goes as the square of the amplitude. So we have four times the energy in this uh, second wave uh, compared to the first wave. A little unfortunate that we have E's in both places here. The bold face C here would be the electric field vector. The E up here just stands for the energy uh, in the wave. But if the amplitude doubles, we get four times as much energy. What do you think would be the case if the amplitude would triple? We get nine times as much energy, three squared. Or if the amplitude would be four times as great, four squared, we'd have 16 times more energy. So the energy of the wave goes as the square of the amplitude. Now let's talk about uh, carrying this energy or power, uh, energy per second, 
um, out to some destination. So perhaps it's a radio tower with an antenna at the top and it's beaming out, or I shouldn't say beaming, it's emitting radio waves in all directions. Beam would imply a narrow beam like a laser beam. It's not the case here. So the radio waves go out in all directions to reach uh, the audience in all directions around the radio tower. How does the intensity of the radio wave decrease uh, with distance as you get further away? When you're near the tower, the energy emitted here is really concentrated. So that's going to be a high intensity situation. When you're further away, the intensity is going to decrease because the energy is diluted as it spreads out. So the energy is expanding out into a sphere. My notes here are a little bit uh, offset from the vertical position. But uh, the energy moves out into sphere from the center here. The area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. r is the radius of the sphere. So 4 pi r squared. So we have the same uh, amount of power going out, you know, maybe a, a 50,000 watt radio station, you know, 50,000 watts being broadcast in all directions. Very quickly, the intensity drops off though, as we have to divide power by area of a sphere to, uh, to come up with the intensity for this situation. In this situation, the uh, radio wave expanding into all directions, the energy gets spread out over a bigger and bigger area as the wave moves out from the uh, transmitter. So we would calculate that by how much power was going out and divide by the area of the sphere uh, given a certain distance away from the transmitter. We could calculate the area of that sphere, 4 pi r squared. And a little animation of this, the energy moving out from a sphere. Don't worry about the equation at the top. Um, but uh, the energy will be diluted as it goes over a larger area, spread out over a larger area. The intensity will decrease. Radio waves themselves are very weak. Uh, microwave signals are weak coming from satellites uh, orbiting the Earth. So unless your satellite has a pretty good power transmitter, you'll need a large dish to accumulate the energy and get a, a usable signal. Uh, for the case of astronomy sources that are very far away, the radio waves are indeed very weak and huge dishes, you know, 300 feet across um, for the antenna would uh, make it more usable, more able to see dim radio sources. But the intensity, uh, power divided by area squared, and if we're very far away from the source, that area is going to be huge that the uh, energy is being radiated out to if it radiates out in a spherical shape. Lasers are a little bit different. I don't have a slide of the laser action here. But for a laser, the beam comes out in one direction and very slowly spreads out. And basically, um, it's a much different process. We don't have a sphere that the energy is spreading out into. Instead, we have a tight beam, and the intensity of a laser can be very high. You should never look at a laser, never point at one at somebody's eye, as the intensities can be greater than the retina can withstand. Only if you're under a doctor's supervision, some uh, uh, laser technician who knows the hazards and know what uh, power level to use, should you have a laser light coming into your eye. So with that, we're going to end here for our discussion of uh, uh, electromagnetic waves. Keep reading and practice the problems.